Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from Fight Wave, and today I'm joined by somebody who I'm very excited to speak with. If you're a fan of the Contender series, you know that today's guest is, in my opinion, one of the best up and coming Canadian bantamweights on the circuit right now. A talent that, in my opinion, goes without saying he's going to be the face of Canadian MMA very soon with the Canadian MMA evolution that we're seeing right now. A phenomenal 10 and 1 record that separates him from a lot of other fighters and a bantamweight with greatness in the making. Today, I'm joined by Serhi Sidi, who will be facing Ramon Tavares at UFC 297. How are we doing today, Serhi? I'm good, brother. That was a hell of an introduction, man. I appreciate that. Absolutely, brother. I mean, the pleasure is all mine. And as a fan of the Contender Series, I have to say off the rip, you know, you were one of those names that, you know, looking into it, obviously you do a little bit of research on the guys going into the Contender Series. Your name was at the top of list in terms of talents to keep an eye out for. Talk to me, obviously, about how everything's been leading up to, you know, the UFC 297 announcement because it's been a chaotic couple weeks to say the least. Yeah, man, it's been it's been great. You know, I was very I was happy with my performance and uh, I knew that they were bringing Ramon back for week 10. So, you know, um, I knew that there's a great there's a great chance, you know, if he goes out there. I mean, he's a slick guy. He has great great hands. I knew that if he does well, that that rematch was gonna happen, and uh, it happened that way. And then uh, I found out it's gonna be in Toronto, and I was just like, perfect, let's do this again because this time I can leave no doubt. Absolutely, and I mean, talking about the Contender Series weekend, obviously not the result any fighter envisions having going into the contender series looking to secure a ufc contract but regardless the boss saw enough of what we knew you had in you which was that skill set and that ability to finish fights he saw that in you and he said you know i want to give this kid an opportunity talk to me just about the fight obviously there was a lot of controversy with the finish uh me personally you know i think that the fight was you know it was a great fight both of you guys were great very great talents going into it talk to me a little bit about your thoughts just going into that fight the result the way that it happened and you know just regardless getting that contract and the whole dana white contender series experience yeah the experience was great you know um i was very calm very very well prepared for this fight um when I was in there in the cage, like, I mean, that that fight ended very, very quick. You know, it was only like about like a minute and a half or so in. Um, but I felt really comfortable with him. I know he's a power puncher. I know he's explosive. But I had his timing down. I had his speed down. And I had, I had my eyes completely locked in on him. When the finish happened, you know, um, of course, I wasn't – I wanted I wanted to make sure that I really, really put him out. But uh, I wasn't unfortunately able to do that because the rep jumped in. But at the end of the day, right, like, I'm going to stop punching the guy when the ref pulls me off. I have no control in that, right? So I was a little bit bummed out after, no, like, watching the replay being like, damn, I wish I, I was able to, like, stop this guy for real and, like, make sure that, like, there was no doubt at all in front of anybody. But at the end of the day, I did my job. Dana liked it. You know, Sean Shelby liked it. They were all very, like, happy with what, what they saw. And uh, now I get to do it again from my hometown. Absolutely. And obviously, like you mentioned, not the fashion anybody expects to win, but looking at just your track record, obviously, you know, a, a powerful fighter, I should say the least, you know, finished a majority of your fights, I think over a 70 or 80% finishing rate, just to be correct. You know, that's a phenomenal thing to hold. And most of the time when you do get that opponent and you tag your opponents up, you leave no doubt, as you've mentioned. And looking at this fight, I feel like it's it's really something, like you mentioned, a full circle moment off the air to see, you know, this fight coming together. A guy that you're already very familiar with in your hometown, you know, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Three years, or I should say three or four years removed from an event that you went to, uh, you know, Holloway versus Ortega. A fight that you were there for, and now the next time that the UFC comes to Toronto, you're there fighting in front of your home crowd. Talk to me about that experience, man, because... We talked off air about the full circle moment. What does that mean to you? Just, you know, from being a fan on the outside looking in to now you're the one in that octagon, the man in the arena. Yeah, buddy. It's a crazy, crazy surreal feeling. I remember like watching that fight and we, we had a great seat. So I was able to like kind of like when Max Hallway walked out, I was able to see the whole arena. I couldn't see one empty seat in the arena and it motivated me and inspired me so much. And just knowing that like I'm a Toronto kid, you know, like when I moved from Ukraine, I, I moved to Toronto originally. So I lived there for a few years and I was just like, like one day I'm going to be in here. I remember leaving that place, man. And that same night, I made like a music playlist on my on my phone and I typed in like UFC, like, like future UFC champ or whatever like that is. And I put a bunch of songs and I put like a little photo of the actual event, that photo I took of like the arena. And uh, I just feel like it's my destiny. I've always had this weird 
intuitive feeling. It's so hard to explain what it is, but I always knew I was going to be in this spot. So it excites me a lot, but I've also I've been like, I knew this was going to happen. I, I've always manifested this and I put in the hard work and it was just a matter of time. But it, it is crazy how things play out that like, I'm just going to like my first fight back and I'm in, I'm in Toronto in my hometown. Uh, it's surreal and I'm just kind of going with it, man. I just, I treat my life like I'm player one in a video game, you know, and this is just another one of those crazy moments and I'm just enjoying it. No, yeah, absolutely. And I got to say, in terms of just being the face of Canadian MMA, I know that's an ambition of yours to lead the charge in Canada, not just in Canada, but also Ukrainian MMA. I feel like both are really overseeing an evolution right now in this sport where we're getting a lot of new up and coming talent. Obviously, you know, Ukrainian MMA right now, it's booming. You've got, you know, Ludwig Shalinian, obviously Yaroslav Amosov, who's the uh, Bellator welterweight champion. You've got Marina Moros. You've got Ihor Potieria. There's a lot of talents, guys and gals, coming up from Ukraine. Canada, phenomenal. I mean, just amazing. You know, UFC 289 was a phenomenal event to watch. I imagine you were being an avid spectator of that, of that card. You know, you've garnered praise from a lot of the fighters on that card. A lot of fighters on the regional. You've trained with guys like TJ Laramie, who I'm very high on. And obviously guys like Mike Malach singing your praises. What does it mean for you to get obviously the support from both the Ukrainian fans, the Canadian fans, and also just the fighters? Because you've been spoken about very highly across the scene for quite some time now. Yeah, man, it means the world to me, man. Like, you know, I was born and raised in Canada. I'm sorry, I was born in Canada or in Ukraine, and I was raised mostly in Canada. I moved to Canada when I was six years old, but you know, I hold like the Ukrainian community and everybody in my heart dearly. My parents, my a lot of my family still live out there. Um, and now I'm repping Canada as well. And both these countries have done so much for me. And uh, it, it excites me so much that I get to go out there and I get to represent both countries. And the praise from like like people like Mike, man, that that means the world to me because I look up to him so much. You know, I, I see how the way he's killing it right now. And he's the face of Canadian MMA, I would say right now. And it's a very inspiring that a guy like that kind of gives me that credit because I mean, it just means I'm doing the right work and I'm, and I'm following the right path. And it's something that just gives me that reassurance and makes me just even more inspired and more motivated to keep keep climbing. No, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you look at, like you mentioned, somebody like Mike Bala, kind of setting the example, leading the blueprint for just what being a Canadian MMA fighter is all about, being humble, being modest, being somebody who goes in there and lets the fights do the talking. You've done that yourself and you've obviously netted some great regional scene accomplishments. You know, four-time BTC fight champion, BFL MMA champion, you know, Across the Canadian regional scene, you've been absolutely killing it. And more importantly, you know, your only blemish on your record is to another great Canadian fighter in the form of Matteo Vogel, who I feel like this year has been an odd year on the Contender Series for Canadian MMA. Obviously, Vogel kind of getting uh, controversially uh, controversially losing his la his fight on the Contender Series, you getting the, the stoppage you did not expect to get. You know, talk to me just about the ceiling for both of you guys, because I feel like you guys are, are the two next biggest talents, both of you guys in the same division, both of you guys on the come up. Talk to me just about seeing, you know, him, his ceiling, his potential, having faced him, and also, you know, just the inspiration you draw from your fellow Canadian counterparts when you see what they're doing. Yeah, you know, uh, the fight with Mateo, my only loss, that was a great fight for me, man, because it, it made me learn so much, so many things that I needed to learn, like, Back then, you know, like I was a great, I was always a great striker, but uh, it showed me that I had a few, few holes in, in, in other parts of my game. And uh, literally a week after that fight, I fought with Mateo. COVID happened, like the next following week. So I spent the next year, every single day, I had nothing to do other than grapple with my coaches, with my team. You know, we had a little lockdown facility. We were training every single day, and uh, then I come back and I, I can now grapple most guys I fight like with ease. Like I just added that into my game. Yeah, and and with just Mateo himself, man, he's a uh, he's a very talented fighter, very very durable, very tough, great grappling, very strong. I think he's a featherweight now, so he, he is a weight class above me. But regardless, man, he's an absolute unit, an absolute killer, and uh, it's very very unfortunate when he lost that controversial decision because I had my phone ready to film because I was like, this dude won, he won that fight, and uh, unfortunately he fought a Las Vegas kid, you know, with a hometown advantage and. Just can't leave it to the judges, right? Like you just really can't leave it to the judges on fights like that. But he's got a he's he's gonna have a great future, man. I I, I truly I truly think so. He's gonna be up there. I'm gonna be up there. We've talked about it in the past. We've we, you know he, I was the champ at 135 at BFL. He's the champ at 145 at BFL, right? Like for some ro reason our, our our roads always cross and we're always kind of intersecting that way. But uh, yeah, man, it just you know high high level guys meet high level guys all the time like that. 
No, yeah, absolutely. And I love that, you know, just what you mentioned here. It's just, you know, like the paths crossing, but it's never a, a doubt. Uh, it's never a, a doubt in my mind that it's never any ill will attached to it. It's just the best facing the best. And I feel like we really get that with Canadian MMA. You mentioned, obviously, just a little bit earlier, kind of the adversities of, of, of training during COVID. I know TJ Laramie, your buddy and my buddy, is outspoken critic of, obviously, how Canada handled the pandemic. How was training during COVID, like, in Canada? What was that experience like? Because I can imagine it was just hell at times and then at other times it was just a blessing in disguise so talk to me about that a little bit yeah yeah you hit you hit the nail on the head buddy that's exactly what it was you know um to be honest like i have a team of very dedicated athletes and we all train twice a day every day during covid you know that we figured out ways to train no matter what i have coaches that this is their life man and like they're like the most they're, they're just so they're 100 percent in right so the, we we made the adjustments it was unfortunate though. There's a lot of facilities that were getting, you know, the cough got called on us. We got to, we'd run out of the gym, hide in our cars. That happened a lot, man. Like we had a couple of different spots bail out, but we never stopped adapting. We never took a day off, man. Like I honestly, that time during COVID, I, I, my skill level went up so high because I didn't have to work. All I had to do was just train and think about training all the time. And uh, it really did level up my game, man. So yeah, you know, there's the pros and cons, but every obstacle man you know we 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 we, uh we went through it and uh we always came out on top no yeah absolutely and like you mentioned you know just the it's a mixed bag when you ask uh Can the canadian fighters especially uh how was the training during covid but you know you take the good with the bad and more important like you mentioned you added a whole nother layer to your game you know you added that level and component of grappling we all knew you for your striking but now like you mentioned you're also an accredited grappler on top of that you know Looking at yourself and projecting, obviously not looking past Ramon, you've you faced him on the contender, you're facing him at 297. How do you foresee your skill set kind of matching up with these other Bantamweight fighters? Because I feel like Bantamweight right now in the UFC especially, it's wide open for the taking. You know, that, that top 10 to top 15 spot is very flexible. Guys are fighting in and out for that position all the time. You know, the, the, the Bantamweight title picture right now is a little bit up in the air. Talk to me about just how you project yourself amongst a lot of these other UFC fighters. Because I feel like your skill matches up very nicely with a lot of these guys. Yeah, man, hundred percent. I'm very, very confident in my 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 skill set right now that I could be fighting these top fifteen guys and doing really well. The thing about me, though, man, is like I, I have a growth mindset and I have an ability to learn consistently. And I'm obsessed with getting better. Like my motto is one percent better every single day. Not just physically in my skills, but also mentally. Because I, I, at the end of the day, I think like this game is eighty percent mental, man. Like you need to learn how to show up in the fifteen minutes, the twenty-five minutes that 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 the event is on, right? Like th that's when you got to be at your best self, your highest self. And uh, I've dedicated a lot, lot of my life training my physical, but also my mental. Thing. my mental is what's going to separate me when i get to that top 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 division because i mean everybody's a killer in the ufc everybody's very high level but i can work on other parts of my games that these guys just might not be working on and uh yeah i think that's going to separate me in the future and make sure that i'm in the top top five top ten in a few years man in a year or two i really think i'm going to break into it no yeah absolutely and i feel like with you a young talent very accredited across your young career thus far you know, just somebody who I think Canadian fighter, Canadian fight fans, UFC fight fans, and just combat sports fans need to keep a tentative eye on because it's always about looking at these guys coming up from the contender series, in my opinion, who really set a strong example in the octagon of just guys that you can never really count out from where they come from. And I feel like with you, we really get to see you kickstart that. Obviously, the next fight is next year. You're kicking off 2024 with a bang, fighting in front of your home crowd against Ramon Tavares. That's a fight that's going to kickstart a campaign, hopefully for you to maybe fight uh, a little bit more frequently than I think you would have wanted this year. I know you, you're you probably wanting to stay active. Talk to me just about on a final note, and obviously, Sergey, thank you so much for your time. First and foremost, an honor and privilege to speak with you. Pick your brain on some topics. Obviously, you're kickstarting 2024 with the, fight, with the fight. You're training through the rest of the year. What are some goals you have for 2024 uh, as Sergey City, not just a fighter, but also the human being to want to really kickstart your ufc campaign and you know really take things to the next level yeah 100 percent, man i'm number one right now it's just like when, when i have this time off it's about skill development right it's not about chilling and like taking time off and relaxing like nah man this is like this is the time that i i get to get better i get to develop my skills my grappling my striking my conditioning 
all that stuff. So then when I show up on January, I'm a completely different fighter than I was in September, right? And that's kind of my motto. Like I'm always trying to get better, trying to get better and treat every, every fight, like the, every past fight as like a fight that I lost. Like what if I lost a fight? What I have to get better at, right? Like I treat, keep it in that mindset. That way I'm always developing. I'm never just fully confident like i'm always trying to be eager to learn and then next year man my goal is to get those fights in you know uh this year like i got a th good three fights in next year i'd like to fight three four times man stay super active you know one fight every three months would be great for me um i love my lifestyle I love my habits when i'm in camp man like I, that's when i feel very very satisfied with my life i feel very very happy because you know i'm always trying to get trying to achieve greatness trying to achieve better things but yeah man i want to really build my brand I want to build the support from Canada and Ukraine and uh, just do big things, man, and inspire the next generation of kids, man. Like, that's a big thing for me. I know I'm a coach at my gym and my local gym here in Burlington, Burlington Training Center, and I still coach even though now I'm fighting, like, in the UFC, and I'm going to continue to coach even if it's reduced hours because, you know, the community aspect of it and just seeing these younger kids coming up, man, like – I just want to help these guys, inspire them. It doesn't have to be about fighting. It could be about anything in life, but I just want everybody, like, I just want to make sure I'm leaving a good positive impact with in my entire community and everybody around me, man. Like, I think that's the, one of those things that's going to really fulfill my life and make me a very happy person. Absolutely. And I love that answer, you know, just setting a strong example, being a leader by example for the people of Canada, for the people of Ukraine, and just being a symbol of positivity and somebody who wants to lead by example. I know that for me, Without a doubt in my mind, you versus Ramon Tavares is going to be on the top of my list of prospects to watch at UFC 297. I'm very excited for that matchup. And to the fans at home watching from Ukraine or from Canada, just know that Serhiy City is your next, I think, superstar in the making. Young talent, very ambitious, great record, known prolific finisher, somebody you'll want to keep a tentative eye on moving forward. To the fans at home watching, I will be linking Serhiy's social medias in the description down below. Get behind your local fighters, support them, show them love when you can. It's been me, Dan, from Fight Wave. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the interview and have a great day, guys.